Welcome to Hofstra Today. I had the opportunity to participate in the Be The Match Bone Marrow Registry Drive right here on Hofstra's campus. And we got to speak to some Hofstra students about some big changes coming to the Office of Residence life. And later on in the show, we'll hear from two members of the acapella group, the Hofbeats. All that and more at and around Hofstra Today. Hello and welcome back to Hofstra Today. I'm Amelia Sack. And I'm Caitlin Bancroft. Caitlin, how are you feeling being back at the desk for our final season of Hofstra Today? You know, it feels amazing. The last time I was at this desk, it was COVID, everybody was wearing masks, the vibes were definitely different, and I just think everything happens for the reason I end up here with you in our last season of Hofstra Today. We started as freshmen, so it's just kind of like a full circle moment for me, and, and it feels great. Yeah, it's really surreal, and of course, with St. Patrick's Day coming up, Caitlin and I were talking a little bit, and neither of us are Irish, but no. we both <laughs> agree that we're very lucky to be here today. Yes, so, so incredibly lucky. But what we're not so lucky about is midterms coming up. I know, at least that's how I feel. You know, Amelia, I think we just have to get through it. It's our last midterm season. We just have to push through and see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, the senioritis is definitely <laughs> kicking in. But hey, I think we can all agree that we're excited for spring break. So as long as we are all in agreement here, let's move on to this week's stories. Stressed about midterms like me and Caitlin were just talking about, there's no need to worry because, as I just mentioned, spring break is just around the corner. There will be no classes the week of March 19th to March 26th for all Hofstra students. Enjoy the long break and relax, Hofstra Pride. Are you looking for a job or an internship for the upcoming months? Good news! The Career and Internship Fair gives students the opportunity to meet with multiple different employers all in one place. The fair will feature companies looking to recruit part-time, full-time, and internship opportunities. The event will take place next Wednesday, March 15th from 1 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. in the Max Sports and Exhibition Complex. All majors and classes are welcome to attend and even have the opportunity to take LinkedIn headshots at the fair. Students should dress in business casual attire and bring copies of their resume. On March 14th, the Center for Labor and Democracy are hosting Equal Pay Day 2023 featuring Erica Smiley and Sarita Gupta. The event will allow students to join the discussion on New York and national job policies to help create a more equitable future as we still feel the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. The celebration is in honor of the 25th anniversary of Hofstra's labor journal, Regional Labor Review. The event will take place from 1 p.m. to 2.25 p.m. in the Student Center Multipurpose Room. It is free and open to the public with no advanced registration required. There have been some recent conversations amongst Hofstra University staff and students that the turnstiles will be removed from the entrance of all dorm buildings. We were able to speak with two Hofstra students who worked for a resident safety about their thoughts on these plans. So I'm an RSSE resident safety shift coordinator. I used to be an RSR. I was for a few years. And then we just had, I guess, differences of opinions in the position. So it led to us parting ways. But I'm also an RA, and so I'm still so every program has to be under a department, um, and we are moved to this new division. Around that same time, they proposed uh, removing the turnstiles from all of the residence halls. However, the turnstile from Constitution has already been removed. There wasn't really any discussion on it with students beforehand. Uh, puts the safety of every resident at risk. It sort of compromises our security system. We are cutting uh, the operating hours of all booths in the residence halls. So instead of us being staffed 24-7 in every building, you're going to staff us up 12 to 16 hours a day. Since we're the largest student employer on campus, if you cut our employees in half, then you're eliminating dozens of student women jobs on campus, and we're not sure whether or not that's going to be offset with jobs we have elsewhere. And then also it felt like it was really sudden to just start telling people this. If I recall correctly, it was about a month before when our break started when they said this, and so everyone who was planning on working during winter session for their livelihood or 
uh, foreign exchange students, uh, international students who were trying to rely on that job for their work visa. Now all of a sudden had a week or had a month to scramble together and figure out what they're going to do and how they're going to be able to survive. And obviously that doesn't affect everyone like that working on the RSR program, but even one student who was told too late is too late. We conducted a survey last semester in regards to removing the turnstiles. And we got, I think last time I checked, we had over 400 responses. And in the comments, there was just uh, dozens of unsettling things about people who've been having experiences with stalking or people showing up to their dorms unwanted. It feels like we're kind of sprucing up all of our visual qualities so that people who come on doors and want to come to school here, which I get, but it does feel like we're more focused on bringing in more students and actually helping the students that are here. Unfortunately, faculty and staff were not able to make comments on camera. However, Hofstra's Director of Communications, Colin Sullivan, sent us this quote. There are no immediate plans this semester to remove any turnstiles on campus. We have conducted focus groups with students and are taking their feedback into consideration as we continue to evaluate the plan moving forward. The Center for Civic Engagement presents Global Justice Day. The panel, titled All Labor is Essential, Migrant Labor and Wage Theft on Long Island, will discuss workplace abuse, deportation threats, and wage theft. Join vice panelist and organizer of the event, Dean Mario Murillo, March 15th from 9.40 to 11.05 a.m. to learn more. This event is free and open to the public. You won't want to miss out on this helpful event. Come to the New York Marine Rescue Center for Service Week. Join the Office of Commuting Student Services and Community Outreach Tuesday, March 21st from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. to help with morning feeding and hands-on seal capture training. Oh, it sounds so cute. Interested students should meet in room 221 in the Student Center to get involved. Prior registration is required on Get Involved HU. Are you working for or starting a small business? We have some good news for you because the Scott Skodnick Business Development and Doc Center and Dr. Crystal Hyden present free and low cost technology tools for small businesses. Attend this free virtual workshop March 27th and April 3rd from 1 to 2 p.m. to learn more about productivity, communication, collaboration, and more. Are you interested in the annual Herbert School Hofstra NLA January trip? If you want to learn more, you can attend one of the two meetings next week on March 13th at 1 p.m. in LHSC Comp School of um, Communication. And then you can also tune in to the March 14th um, meeting in the content suite at 6 p.m. Applications are open until March 31st, so be sure to contact Associate Dean Adria Marlowe to get involved. This program is open to all LHCS majors, and it's an amazing opportunity that Herbert students should take advantage of. Feeling rough? Come over to the Plaza Room and pet your struggles away during pet therapy on March 14th and 15th from noon to 3 p.m. This event allows all Hofstra students to spend some time relaxing with puppies in between studying for those midterms. No advanced registration is required. A special dinner and networking event with Hofstra alumni leaders will give students the opportunity to sit down with successful alumni women in leadership positions from a variety of backgrounds. This event will be held on March 14th from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at the University Club. Students are encouraged to wear business attire for this event Dinner is included, and space is limited for this event, so students must fart RSVP on the Hofstra events calendar. Don't shake your shamrocks. Hofstra today will be right back with your national news. Hey guys, it's me, Isabella Gomez, filling in for Smokey Bear, because he's got more to say than just... Only you can prevent wildfires. Like, if you're outside enjoying a barbecue, don't let a hamburger distract you from fire safety. Make sure you aren't dumping your hot coals or ashes onto the ground because that could start a wildfire. So take wildfire prevention seriously and let's save the world one day at a time. Juntos con Smokey Bear, podemos hacerlo. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Welcome back. Let's shamrock and roll on over to Derek Beckel with this week's National Stories.
The Government 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifelines LGBTQ Pilot Program is a new initiative that offers text and chat services 24-7, which is a major step forward in strengthening the mental health safety net for all people in America. With the launch in September, chat and text have only been available during select hours. However, since services have been moved, the total amount of context has increased, with 11% coming through the LGBTQ line. 988 Lifeline encourages everyone of all backgrounds who are experiencing mental health or substance abuse crisis or who are feeling suicidal to call or text 988 without fear and with an expectation that they will receive the help they need. This past Friday, four Americans were involved in a kidnapping in Mexico. Having traveled out of the country for a medical procedure, the four were held at gunpoint and dragged into a white pickup truck. Two of the victims were sadly pronounced dead. The other two were found alive, one of which surviving multiple gunshot wounds to his legs. The victims were brought to a hospital in Texas for care and observation. A 24-year-old man involved with the kidnapping has been arrested, though the charges against him are still unknown. America is currently in the process of providing assistance to the victims and their families. On Tuesday, Florida Republicans filed for a bill that would ban abortions for all pregnancies past six weeks. This ban, first proposed by Florida Senator Erin Grail, will only allow exceptions on rape and incest for people who have a court-issued restraining order. This ban has been backed by Governor Ron DeSantis, who has, currently been in, who has consistently been in support of the complete ban of abortion. Vice President Kamala Harris has clapped back at them, saying that the call for freedom from Republicans is hypocritical as they continue to attack it. Stay tuned for future developments in this story. That's all for your national news. Now back to you, Amelia and Caitlin. On February 21st, I had the privilege of being a part of the Be The Match donor registry here at Hofstra University. The event was co-sponsored by Good Morning America and WABC7. We had a great turnout on campus. Check it out. I'm Amelia Sack, and we're here bright and early in the Student Center Atrium for the Be The Match Bone Marrow Registry Drive. Here, students can easily become a part of the registry to hopefully one day be a life-saving match for someone in need. Be The Match is critical for anybody who is suffering from a blood disease or a blood cancer or at risk for one of these diseases. If they need a life-saving bone marrow transplant, that is where you go to find a potential match. You just take two little swabs, each cheek, 10 seconds, put it in an envelope, mail it back to our lab to be typed, and then you're on what we call the world's greatest waiting list. A lot of different ethnicities and races. You know, for someone like me, I have a good chance to match with someone else. For someone who is African American, it's much lower than that. So, with all these minorities, all these different races and ethnicities here, it's better for us as a younger generation to stand up and fight for a cause against all these diseases. If you're still interested in becoming a part of the registry, you can do so by texting GMANYC to 61474. Again, that's 61474. We at Hofstra today want to thank WABC, GMA, and of course, Be The Match for coming to our campus and hosting this wonderful event. Wow, what an inspiring turnout. Thanks so much for that, Amelia. Don't go away. Next, we'll be heading oh, somewhere over the rainbow with Athena Dawson for this week's weather update. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Welcome back to Hofstra today. Now, I'm sure like most of you, I wish for good weather this week. So let's check it out with Athena Dawson to hear what we have going on.
Thanks, Amelia and Caitlin. I'm Athena Dawson, and this is your five-day weather forecast. Right now, it's a windy 46 degrees outside of our studio here at the Herbert School. We can expect mostly sunny skies to continue for the rest of the day. Temperatures will reach a high of 46 and a low of 28 degrees. Thursday will bring sunny skies with temperatures reaching a high of 48 and a low of 31. Now let's take a look at how the rest of the week will take shape here in Hempstead. On Friday morning, there will be partly cloudy skies with temperatures reaching a high of 42 during the day. In the evening, you should have your winter coat ready because you can expect a mixture of rain and snow with temperatures hitting a low of 30. On Saturday morning, the rain and snow mixture should continue until noon, and after that, we will see overcast skies for the rest of the day. Temperatures will reach a high of 44 and a low of 29. On Sunday, we will see beautiful sunny skies with temperatures peaking at a high of 46 and a low of 36. It should be the perfect day for you and your friends to visit Eisenhower Park as we enter the last week of classes before spring break. That's all for the five-day weather forecast. I'm Athena Dawson. Back to you, Amelia and Caitlin. Next up, our anchor Gabe James is going to chat with two members of the Hoff Beats, one of Hofstra University's co-ed a cappella groups, about their competition season. Let's hear how some of the things are going. Thanks, Caitlin. I am here with Aiden Kilgallen, the music director, and Ryan Christopher, the choreographer. How are you both doing today? Good. How are you? I'm doing really well. Thank you. I'm happy to be here with you all. Can you give me an overview about what really is the Hoff Beats? Yeah, so the Hoff Beats is one of the two co-ed a cappella groups on campuses, uh, on campus. Um, we do um, mainly kind of performances, um, competitions, um, and we're an audition-only group. Um, so if you want to find out more about us, you can look at us on the Hoff Beats on social media. And yeah. What is something unique about the Hoff Beats that really stands out to each of you? Um, something I would say is that we all as a group are kind of really focused and, and determined to kind of just do the best that we can and because we know that we can do really well when we really kind of like put our minds to it. Yeah, I think a strength is our ability to work together. Um, we lost a lot of seniors last year, a lot of important members of our group and the new members have really stepped up and I think our ability to kind of get along and create those friendships so quickly has been really special to see. I love to hear it. It sounds like Hoff Beats is going to be around for a long time. But congratulations from Hofstra today and of course everyone on campus on your first place win at the ICAA quarterfinals this weekend. What kind of preparation goes into getting ready for that competition? Yeah, so um, we actually started working on it a week before we came back for the second semester. Um, but we started picking the songs even before that. Um, and the main thing that we do is a, a five-day boot camp where we rehearse from 5 to 10 p.m. and a lot of it is music-centric and also choreo-centric. Um, so we'll, we'll get a dance room or something and, and work on the set together. Um, but that is where the majority of the work is done. But of course, that's continued on in rehearsals and, and basically kind of just preparing up until the time of the show. Mm -hmm. And Ryan, what does it mean to have won the Best Solo Choreography Award? Uh oh, um, that really means a lot to me because, um, especially the choreography one, I was not expecting it. Um, this is actually the first time I've choreographed something, and I worked. I think I worked really hard on it. So to see that that is kind of getting recognized, kind of, you know, it does mean a lot. I'm very thankful for that. Congratulations again. What an Thank accomplishment. You. First place for your first time. <laughs> so when and where is the semifinal competition? It is Sunday, uh, March 26th at the Berkeley College of Music in Boston, Massachusetts. So we're looking forward to it. Um, yeah. A lot Getting of hard excited. work has gone into it. There's a lot of good groups from all over um, the Northeast. So yeah, looking forward to it. Sounds like it's going to be a great time. What is some of the motivation for each of you that really keeps you going during these boot camps, long rehearsals, and just preparing? Um, I think one of the biggest motivators for our group is that we all just really enjoy singing and, and performing and putting on this, this set for people, having an audience, and I think that is kind of our biggest motivator is that we genuinely en enjoy doing it. Yeah, this is my first year as um, music director, so to kind of see along with that, like we're really enjoying it. We have new members who are kind of getting into it and kind of seeing them grow with us, I think, um, and with the music is really cool. 
It sounds magical. If students want to get involved with the Half Beats, how can they do that, and what is the audition process looking like? Yeah, so if you want to get involved with the Half Beats, like I said, you can check us out on social media um, at the Half Beats. The audition process usually happens in the fall, um, where we ask people to sing a verse and a chorus of a song, and then we determine through, we have a lot of people audition, and then there'll be callbacks, and then it'll be same thing, but then they work with the group. So um, definitely first audition is more solo centric, and the second audition is more solo and group work. Um, but yeah. That sounds like a really fun thing. And our last question, if you had to describe half beats in one word, what would you say? Ooh, if I had to describe half beats in one word, um, I would say energetic. Energetic and? Family. Love it. Thank you both Aiden and Ryan for joining us on Hofstra today and good luck for your future competitions. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks Gabe. We'll be right back with some spectacular entertainment news right after this short break. Don't go anywhere. I tell my son I love you every single day. Oh. Now my dad has never said that to me. Not because he doesn't love me but because culturally it wasn't comfortable for him. Now that he's a grandfather, he says, I love you to my son every time he sees him. My advice to all the fathers out there, forget the cultural restrictions. They grow up way too fast for you to waste even a single precious moment. Welcome back. I think we reached the pint in the show where we toss it over to Maddie Greenberg to hear today's top Hofstra entertainment news. What's going on over there, Maddie? Thanks, Caitlin. Do you want a night of fun games from different countries with new friends? The Global Mentors are hosting an international game night and Mixer featuring several card and board games from all over the world. Plus, classic table games like ping pong and foosball, video games on PlayStation, Xbox, and Wii, as well as free pizza. If this sounds up your alley, check it out this Saturday, March 11th from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. in the Student Center game room. Admission is free with your Hofstra ID. <clears throat> The American Chamber Ensemble, in association with the Hofstra Music Department, is performing Exploring the Human Spirit Part 2. This event will pay tribute to two musical icons and Hofstra legends, Stanley Drucker and Herbert Deutsch. This event will be held Sunday, March 12th in the Helene Fortunoff Theater. Tickets are free to Hofstra students and $20 for anyone outside of the school. You won't want to miss this one-time only event, so be sure to check it out. In honor of Women's History Month, the Women's Studies Program in the Department of Sociology and the Hofstra Cultural Center present a book launch and conversation for A History of Silence by Cynthia J. Begard. The author is not only a wonderful novelist and longtime feminist, but also a former professor here at Hofstra University. The event will be held on Thursday, March 30th in the Cultural Center Theater located in the Axon Library. Tickets are free and the event is open to the public. Advanced registration is required. Our field reporter, Nicholas Costanza, sat down with some students in the dance and drama department to learn more about their upcoming show, State Fair, which premieres this weekend. Let's take a look. Hi everyone, it's Nick Costanzo from Hofstra Today, and today I am joined with Sam, Jess, and Caitlin, and they are cast members from State Fair, and we're going to ask them some questions and get some insight. I kind of took more of a standpoint that focused more on the dancing aspect of it all just because my character her number one goal is to be on Broadway and what is Broadway in 1946 so doing my research beforehand was really focusing on the styles of dance that were alive and what was on Broadway in 1946 so I was like really scared about playing like the mother because I am the youngest of three and I am like annoying and I'm the instigator in my family and I'm like you know, so it was kind of scary to be like, I have to be like the total opposite person of like who I was growing up. So I actually, I've taken dance classes before when I was like a little before high school. I've taken like tap, jazz, ballet, uh, hip hop, stuff like that. I took it upon myself to really start focusing on regaining my strength and my core, because I think you don't realize dancing and singing at the same time and it, sustaining six, seven minute long dance numbers is something not for the faint of heart. Um, and 
all of it stems from having really, really strong core and center of yourself. It's gonna be in the Adams Playhouse, this beautiful building right here. 10th, 11th, 12th, 14th, 15th, and 16th. On the 12th, we have a 2 p.m. matinee um, right here in the Playhouse. Yes, we, on the Hofstra website, you can go look at the current calendar of events and there will be a link tree link to go purchase, not purchase, tickets are free, but sign up, sign up. If you are not a Hofstra student, you are allowed to sign up your name and get a seat. But we have Sam, Jess, Caitlin, thank you guys so much for everything. Very much appreciated. Yes, so come out, pull up. It's gonna be a great show, State Fair, 1940s. And with that, that concludes our interview. I'm Nick Costanzo with Hofstra today, and we'll send it back to you in the studio. Turning off your TV would be a jig mistake. Your sports news is up next after this short break. Stay with us. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. Why? I can't drive. Why? My. Oh. <laughs> now it's time to get this patty started with some sports news from Danny DiCrescenzo. Danny, tell us what's going on. Well, Amelia, Monday night saw Hofstra's quest to play a March Madness come to an unfortunate end. The men's basketball team fell in the semifinals of the CAA tournament to UNCW 79-73 in overtime. CAA Player of the Year Aaron Estrada led all scores with 25, while Jaquan Carlos added 19. But don't worry, the Pride season isn't over yet. They'll play in the National Invitational Tournament later this month. The date and time will be announced soon. And speaking of hoops, we're actually minutes away from the women's basketball team getting their postseason started. They'll also be squaring off against UNCW in the first round of their CAA tournament today at 2. The winner of this matchup will do battle with North Carolina A&T tomorrow at 2.30. The Pride ended their season on a tough loss to William & Mary, but now is as good a time as any to turn it around behind all CAA second team nod Brandy Thomas. They'll hope to survive in advance this afternoon. And finally, wrestlers Jacob Ferreira and Trey Rogers will represent Hofstra at the upcoming NCAA Championships. They'll be hosted in Oklahoma between March 16th and 18th. Ferreira earned an at-large selection while Rogers qualified automatically after his fifth place showing at the EIWAs this past week. Huge accomplishment for both wrestlers who find out their bracket placements tonight at 8 o'clock p.m. Well, our time today has came and left for gone. And thanks for watching this week's episode of Hofstra Today. Special thanks to the Hoff Beats for taking the time to speak with us. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and our new TikTok at Hofstra Today for fun video updates. Until next time, that's all at and around Hofstra Today. <laughs>